Hello. Steven Spielberg's pseudo-historical film about a 19th century mutiny and massacre aboard a Spanish slave ship, Amistad, and the subsequent trial of the black mutineers is being praised by the reviewers. Spielberg, one of the wealthiest and most successful of Hollywood's Jewish filmmakers, also is being praised by his kinsmen in various so-called human rights organizations for using his propaganda skills to sensitize white Gentile audiences to the horrors of slavery and make them feel just a little more guilty for treating non-whites so badly in the past. What Spielberg's new film doesn't mention, of course, is that Spielberg's Jewish kinsmen owned many, though not all, of the ships involved in the 18th and 19th century Atlantic trade in black slaves, and in fact played a very prominent role in bringing black slaves to America. The film rather tends to steer one away from blaming anyone for slavery except white Gentiles. This bit of misdirection is interesting in light of the fact that Jews have been dominant in the slave trade since at least Roman times, especially the trade in white slaves. Jewish slave dealers followed Caesar's armies everywhere, into Gaul, into Germany, and into other northern lands, eager to buy as slaves all of the captives of the Romans, especially the female captives. Jews have remained dominant in the white slave trade until the present day, although during the Middle Ages the Christian church tried unsuccessfully a number of times to stop them, beginning in the 5th century with an edict by the Emperor Theodosius II against Jews owning Christian slaves. After being banned from owning or dealing in slaves by one emperor, the Jews would wait until the next emperor came along. Then they would buy a charter, giving them a monopoly in the slave trade. Then public outrage against the Jews would grow until another emperor would ban their slave dealing again. Most of the time, however, the Jews were the undisputed masters of the white slave trade, and that is still the case today. Interestingly enough, this fact was revealed in a recent news report in the Jewish newspaper, the New York Times of all places. The January 11th issue has a major article titled Contraband Women and written by a Jewish reporter in Israel. The article deals specifically with the Jewish trade in Ukrainian and Russian women, although it doesn't label the trade as Jewish. What the report does say is this, and I quote, Centered in Moscow and the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, the networks trafficking women run east to Japan and Thailand, where thousands of young Slavic women now work against their will as prostitutes, and west to the Adriatic coast and beyond. The routes are controlled by Russian crime gangs based in Moscow. End of quote. What the reader must understand is that these crime gangs don't have a real Russian in them. They are entirely Jewish, but the agreed-upon subterfuge used by the newspapers in this country is to refer to them as Russian rather than as Jewish. Thus one reads in various news organs about the recent takeover of organized crime in many areas of America, especially the East Coast and Los Angeles, by Russian gangs, and of the viciousness and cleverness of these Russian gangsters. But there is never any mention of the fact that they are not Russians at all, but Jews from the former Soviet Union.
the story of the exploitation of Eastern Europe by the Jews is a fascinating and infuriating story. Throughout the Middle Ages and into the modern era, they focused on profiting from the weaknesses and vices of the Gentile populations of Poles, Russians, Ukrainians, and others, among whom they lived as a barely tolerated minority. In addition to being the moneylenders, they controlled the liquor business and owned the drinking establishments, the gambling dens, and the brothels. A number of 19th century Russian writers, among them Dostoevsky and Gogol, have described their destructive effects on Slavic peasant society and the perpetual condition of mutual hostility which existed between the Jews and the Slavs. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, the Jewish trade in white slaves from these lands expanded enormously. It has been described by the Jewish historian Edward Bristow in his 1982 book, Prostitution and Prejudice, published by Oxford University Press and by Schocken Books in New York. Although Bristow's book is written from the viewpoint of one opposed to this Jewish trade in women, it is nevertheless enormously revealing. The Jews recruited peasant girls in Polish and Russian villages, usually under false pretenses, and transported them to brothels in Turkey, Egypt, and other parts of the Middle East, to Vienna, Budapest, and other major cities in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and as far away as New York, New Orleans, and Buenos Aires. This Jewish trade in Slavic women naturally caused a great deal of hatred against the Jews by the Slavs, and this hatred broke out in pogroms and other popular actions against the Jews over and over again. One would believe from the works of Mr. Spielberg and other Jewish propagandists that the hatred the Slavs bore against the Jews was based only on religious bigotry and that the Jews were completely innocent and inoffensive. One fascinating fact which Bristow's book reveals is that the center of the Jewish trade in Polish girls was a little town called Oswitzen. The German name for this town was Auschwitz. I don't mean to imply that the Jews were the only ones at fault in the white slave trade. Gentile politicians and police officials gladly accepted bribes from the Jews and, re and in return allowed them to carry on their dirty business. And in the United States, non-Jewish criminal elements, such as the Mafia, collaborated with the Jews or even ran their own white slave operations. But the trade in white slaves from Eastern Europe has been an exclusively Jewish activity for the last 200 years.